One temperatures in the upper 30s for this morning, so it's chilly, mostly clear skies. Lower 60s for this afternoon, but this will be the last warm day because Arctic air will be arriving for tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. Full details on that forecast and look at the latest model guidance coming up in just a few short minutes. Possible 2 begins right now. All right, right now, little the little Cajun saint may become an official saint. A ceremony was held to pray for her canonization. And Acadiana, be prepared for the Arctic blast forecasted for our area, while some states are already in the middle of braving the cold. Live from Acadiana, your local news leader, this is Pass Pa 2. Good morning to you and I thank you for joining us this morning. We begin with a huge concern about human trafficking. The U.S. Department of State each year estimates 600,000 to 800,000 men and women and children are trafficking across the international borders. And the trade is growing. News 10's Rodrigo Taylor spoke with a regional director at the Center for Children and Families who deal with people impacted by human trafficking. According to data from the Office of Human Trafficking Prevention, in 2021, there were over 900 victims of human trafficking in communities across Louisiana. Katie Gwynn, Regional Director of the Center for Children and Families, say awareness, more communication, and insight around the topic of human trafficking are the best ways to combat the ever-changing issue we see in the world. Gwen says since working with the agency, she better understands people impact by trafficking. She explains human beings are built to survive and there's always a vulnerability when targeting people for human trafficking. She says you can see such cases in runaways. Every child that runs away, one in four will be approached by a trafficker within the first 48 hours because there is that vulnerability, right? That child is trying to survive. They're trying to get their next meal met trying to find housing, so they will do almost anything to survive. If you believe you are a victim of human trafficking or have information about a potential trafficking situation, call the National Human Trafficking Hotline. You can find more information on our website at klfy.com. In Lafayette, Rodrigo Taylor, KLFY News 10. Then a homegoing service was held Saturday for fallen Marine Lance Corporal Nicholas Durrell after he was killed in the line of duty. An American embassy in the Republican of the Congo. News 10's Kai Price was at that service yesterday and brings us a look at into how his life was honored. Family, friends and fellow comrades of Lance Corporal Nicholas Durrell came together to honor his life and accomplishments as they put him to rest. It wasn't a dry eye in sight at Gethsemane Church as everyone said their final goodbyes to Lance Corporal Durrell. During the homegoing service, his former Marine Corps colleagues honored him during a presentation for his bravery, integrity, and service to the country. While it was an emotional event, it was also an appreciation to all that Durrell has done to protect others. Many of his loved ones honored him with a speech about what they will always remember about him. During her speech, Darrell explains a moment when she found a letter that her son wrote in high school to describe heroism. She says while reading the letter made her emotional, it was needed for her to know that her son was an incredible human being. He wrote the speech like in um, ninth grade and um, it was a good speech and he got to read it at school. I put it on the refrigerator on the side and it's always been there and I've read it before, but when I was cleaning, I looked at it and I read it again and it brought me to tears because I felt that it was so relevant to who he was, who he is, and what he stood for. Darrell says she hopes people will look up to her son as a great example on how to live life. Nick chose to be of service and to be a protector and I just hope they take that and some kids use that as a role model. In Lafayette. Kai Price, KLFY, News 10.
Then yesterday, a statue was donated to the St. Landry Parish Veterans Memorial. The statue is of a bald eagle standing atop of a battlefield cross. The battlefield cross is a rifle standing straight in a pair of combat boots, along with a helmet on top of that. It has become a symbol of loss, mourning, and closure for the living. Blake and Monad Legrays attended a cancer fundraiser where they won that statue. They say it has no better place than the St. Landry Parish Veterans Memorial. It honors them and it lets these young kids know that they're serving and people are going to remember them. They're going to remember what they've done for the country and for our area. And that freedom is not free. And freedom is not free. All right, the statue is now being installed and will act as a communal space for veterans. A ceremony at the Joint Readiness Training Center in Fort Johnson honored its warriors with the unveiling of its new warrior memorial. This is the first ceremony held since being renamed Fort Johnson in honor of Sergeant William Henry Johnson. News 10's Jasmine Dean has a look at last week's unveiling. Remembering Sergeant William Henry Johnson and continuing to honor his legacy here at Fort Johnson, an unveiling ceremony of the Warriors Memorial allowed soldiers and civilians to learn more about his history and his brave legacy. During World War I, Sergeant William Henry Johnson served in the 369th Infantry Regime, one of the first African-American units in the U.S. Armed Forces to have black officers. Sergeant Johnson single-handedly fought off a German raiding party with a knife, saving a fellow soldier. Because of this, Johnson is recognized for his warrior spirit and is honored with the Joint Readiness Training Center in Fort Johnson being named after him. Now, Fort Johnson is honoring soldiers who embody what it means to be a warrior with the unveiling of its warrior memorial. It's an honor to stand before you today and speak about an American hero whose bravery and selflessness continue to inspire us. Telling Sergeant Johnson's story, Brigadier General David Gardner shares what it means to be courageous. Sergeant Johnson's remarkable story is one that embodies the very essence of courage and sacrifice. Gardner says the memorial unveiling is not only a way to remember fallen soldiers, but it's a continued step in the right direction to keep Sergeant William Henry Johnson's legacy alive, especially being one of the only enlisted African American soldiers to be honored with the renaming of an army base after him. So today, as we unveil this monument in honor of Sergeant William Henry Johnson, we pay tribute to a man whose actions transcend time and whose spirit of bravery will forever be etched in our hearts. At Fort Johnson, Jasmine Dean, KLFY News 10. So the Little Cajun Saint is one step closer to becoming recognized as an official saint. Saturday morning, the church held a cause for canonization ceremony, meaning now all that's left in this process is to be given the green light by the Vatican. News 10 was there as hundreds of people came to witness the historic event. Here's Britt. LaFonso. I always said she was the most extraordinary, ordinary person I had ever known. Hundreds of people gathering at St. Edward Catholic Church on what would have been Charlene Richard's 77th birthday. Those who came prayed over her tomb and attended Mass before the investigation into her sainthood is sent to the Vatican. Charlene's brother recalls when she came home one day after catechism class after learning about St. Teresa of Lisieux. And she said, do you think I could be a saint like she was? And my grandmother said, of course you can. She said, St. Therese promised God that she would, whatever she did, she would do to the best of her ability for his greater glory. And she said, well, well I can do that. And she did. She did. Charlene died at just 12 years old in 1959 after losing her battle with leukemia. It's said during her last days on earth at Our Lady of Lords Hospital in Lafayette, she offered her suffering and prayers to God each day for different people. Since that day, thousands have come from all over the world to pray at her tomb. I have met several people who have had definite miracles praying to her. 
Father Taylor Reynolds is the Episcopal delegate for Charlene Richard. He's been a huge part in Charlene's cause for canonization. I think she's an example of someone who can suffer and it can be have a purpose, it can have a meaning. You know, she had a beautiful relationship with, um, with Father Brennan, with priests, so I think she can give an example of just that you know, prayer for, for that unity in the church, you know, the healing of the church between the lay people, priests, I think that can be a beautiful example. Of course, I mean, young people, you know, she, she played basketball, she rode horses, she played with animals. I think young people can look to this person and be like, wow, like, okay, I can still, like, you know, play softball and maybe be a saint one day, you know, and that's, that's really, I think, what the Lord, you know, wants to show us. And I think that's one of the reasons why people could turn to her, you know, for prayer and everything. Father Taylor will now be hand delivering the nearly 2,000 page investigation to the cause of saints in the Vatican. At this point it's in, the, it's in, the, it's in Rome's hands pretty much um, and so we just pray for the, for the Lord to bring this about. Father Taylor explains once the causes of saints names her venerable, she could then be named blessed. At that point she'll be recognized as a saint. So, energy is suspending disconnects for non-payment this week because of the freezing temperatures that are coming. The suspension period will be from Monday through Friday after that. They will do a day-by-day -day assessment, see if they can resume disconnects or keep them suspended. Well, as we prep for an Arctic blast with temps plummeting, other states are dealing with the snow and icy roads making for dangerous road conditions. Here's a look at that.